So, Mike, this is the secret weapon. Well, yeah, I guess it's uh, it's not very secretive. It's not much of a weapon, but it's an extremely effective steam box. Uh, real simple to do. Starts out down here with a lobster cooker. Produces a, a, a real hot flame. It's running off of propane. Right, exactly. On top is a uh, brand new gasoline can. I bought this brand new at the hardware store. I've never put gasoline in. It's never had anything other than water. Okay. There are just plumbing fittings that connect it to this tube up here. The secret of this box is you get a very vigorous boil down here and tight fittings all the way up so that you don't get any steam escaping on the way up. How about the steam that's coming out the bottom? The easiest uh, relief valve in the world. It's just a hole in the bottom of the uh, uh, of the pipe, and the steam is pushing downward, I'm telling you that there's just a little bit of pressure in there. Now, what's cooking in there now? A couple of thin strips of wood that we're going to be bending. Oh, there they are. Some oak. Now, Mike, tell me this. How much time do we have to get the wood from the steamer over onto the form? We'll want it bent in about 45 seconds. Oh, now I know why you want the form ready and why we're so close to the steamer. When you're bending wood, you don't want anything going wrong. We ready to try a piece? I'm ready if you are. All right. It's on. Okay. 45 seconds, huh? Okay, you do that side? Okay. Is there any secret to this? Just yeah, yeah. slow and easy. It's hot. It's a little hot on the fingers. It seems to be bending nicely. And when you clear that hole over there, take a pen and put in a wedge. And it is burning. It is, that's right. If it isn't hot, it won't bend. Beautiful. Now, how long does it have to sit in this form? Well, it has to dry, and we'll speed it up by putting it in the kitchen oven. Uh, just an ordinary household oven? Right. Set it at the lowest setting, 150, 170 yeah. degrees, and bake it until it's dry. How will I know it's dry? It'll be loose on the form. Okay. Well, there's a lot to uh, a lot to this. Think I'm ready to go solo? Oh, yeah. You're all set. If you have any trouble, you know the way back. Well, thanks for all the tips. It's been great. You're welcome. Well, when we got back here to the shop, the first thing we did was to build a steamer, just like Mike's. So now while the steamer heats up, let's go look at the wood. And you'll notice that I've kept the steamer close to the shop door, because once the wood is steamed, I don't have much time to get it to my forms. Now before we start any work today in the shop, let's take a moment to talk about shop safety. Whether you're using hand tools or power tools, be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your tools properly reduces the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these. Come on, Norm, safety get on with it, Norm. Now, to get started, I need to make some pieces to bend or put in the steamer. And Mike was nice enough to give me some of his nice green oak. I left it outside because I don't want it to dry out too much. And it's actually going to make the process of splitting it a little bit easier because it's frozen. Now the reason we go through all the trouble of splitting the wood is that if I was to run it through the saw, it's possible that I would go across the grain. And that almost guarantees that when I put the wood in the steamer and then try to bend it, that it's going to split. So we're going to start by just using an axe. We're going to split this piece right in half. Mind your fingers, Norm. Let's look at what we have so far. If you look at the last split that I made, you can see that it runs across the growth rings. The growth rings running up and down. And that yields this piece, which is just about the right thickness that I want and usable. However, this piece is still a little too thick. If I was to make another split across the growth rings, it would be all right on this end. But on this end, I'm afraid the pieces will be too thin. Now, there's no reason not to make a split with the growth rings. And if I do that, this will yield a good piece on this side. This will be waste. Good. The next step is to smooth one of the wide surfaces. And I'm tempted to take this to the joiner, but the joiner will remove the high spots. And the more I join it, the risk is that I'll go across the grain. When I steam the piece and try to bend it, it's going to split. So I want to use a hand plane, which allows me a little more control to follow the grain and smooth it out. Now I want to make
make the pieces uniform in thickness. I could run it through the surface planer, but that would take several passes. So I'm going to start by making a pass through the table saw. I set up this block which acts like a feather board to hold the piece tightly against the fence while it goes through the saw. I'm going to rip it about a sixteenth of an inch oversized. Now, one pass through the surface planer will give me the thickness that I want. Now it's back to the workbench and we'll joint an edge. That's fine. We'll do the others. Now with that good edge against the rip fence, we'll get the ultimate width that I want for the pieces. That might seem like a lot of work to go through to get a couple pieces of wood. But, as Mike told me, this is just about the right thickness to bend the wood easily. And by going through the trouble of keeping the grain parallel, that pretty much assures me that when I bend it, it won't split. Also, this size, when glued together, will give me the cross section I need for our project. Now I need some forms around which I can bend the steamed oak. As Mike recommended, I started out with some three quarter inch thick plywood and I attached some one and a half inch thick stock to it, approximating the shape of the piece that I want. I've also installed some dowel pins which will hold the piece in place while it cures. Now notice that the size of the plywood base is that of a large cookie sheet, and that's so I can fit it in my oven to accelerate the drying. Otherwise, I'll have to let it sit in the shop for several days. Now I think we're ready to bend some oak. Free money, free money, free money, free money, free. Oh, stop it.